What? It's time now for My Two Favorite Librarians. Brought to you by the Copper Tree Boutique in Dale's Grand Market, located in beautiful, historic downtown Amherst. Hi, this is My Two Favorite Librarians. I'm Denise Corey. I'm Chantal Taylor, and today we're talking about Remembrance Day. Yeah. Every year we try to talk about Remembrance Day. I think it's important for us to remember and honor those who have died in wars, especially those who died trying to protect us, whether they be a soldier or if they're, you know, regular people have done a lot of things too. So it's important to take this time to remember people who have sacrificed. And this year will be unusual because we, of course, can't have our Remembrance Day ceremony. Do we know if they're doing something virtually or if it's just... Uh, My understanding is that Amherst has canceled their ceremony, Okay, but I couldn't find anything definitively that said that. So if you, listener, know something, please do let us know on the My Two Favorite Librarians Facebook group, and then we will try to distribute that widely. I do know that some other locations in Cumberland were doing some Remembrance Day ceremonies, but they were doing them differently. There was like, you had to book to lay a wreath, but uh, you know... Even if we're not having ceremonies, there are still things that we can do. Absolutely. Uh, First and foremost, we're probably all wearing our poppies. We're uh, recording this just after Halloween, so I forgot my poppy today on my way to work. But I do have a reusable metal poppy that I bought. But don't forget to give a donation and get a poppy from the Lions, not the Lions Club. The Legion. The Legion. Sorry, and the Legion. money the money from the poppy sales does help support the Legion and their programs. So which they do programs for our veterans. And I don't know if they'll be I know this morning I dropped my car off for snow tires and there was a poppy container there at Hyundai. So even if the veterans aren't sitting at Walmart or where we usually see them, the poppy containers are still around. Yeah, I saw one in Dale's as well. So it is time to wear your poppies to help remember. To remember and to support our veterans. And as Denise mentioned, we're not all meeting en masse this year. But that doesn't mean you still can't visit a war memorial. There are numerous throughout Cumberland County, throughout Nova Scotia. So, of course, you can drop by and have a moment of silence. Maybe not on Remembrance Day, but you can also have a moment of silence in your house at 11 o'clock. I had also seen somebody say that you should go to the end of your driveway at 11 and do, and it's two minutes of silence. She's just looking at me. Um, Go to the end of your driveway on Remembrance Day, and then you have a group of people with whom you are remembering, but then we're still socially distanced. So we want to keep everybody safe while we remember the sacrifices other people have made to keep us safe. It's important. You know, this year is not the best year for anything. Yeah, really. Ugh. Uh, I found a website, uh, it was CBC for Kids, and they had a list of things you can do for Remembrance Day. So we've talked about wearing our poppies, visiting war memorials. You can also send letters. So last year, Cumberland Public Libraries did Christmas cards and set them off to soldiers in... uh, Active duty soldiers. Yes, thank you. But you can write to an Armed Forces member or veteran and thank them for their services through the postcard or Peace e-cards. And we'll post this article with the link that you can go on and send a card if you wanted to. So that's another way you can... Yeah, it's good to... uh, Be involved in Remembrance Day. Yeah, it's nice to thank somebody for the service that they've provided. I don't know if... Because, of course, there aren't that many World War II veterans left. There are obviously later veterans still here. But we, of course, used to have somebody come into the school every year and talk about their experience in World War II. I don't know if they do that in the schools anymore. Uh, Well, yeah, because your World War II veterans are, the ones who are still with us, are quite old now. And especially with a pandemic out there, it's... um, I'm not even considering pandemic. (laughs) I'm just considering 
I do want to remind everybody that all Cumberland Public Library's locations will be closed on November 11th to honor Remembrance Day. Although there are differences with the ceremonies, we still think it's important that the staff at the library be able to spend the day in honor. But we will resume our regular hours on Thursday, November 12th. So, of course, we do have books we yes. can talk about. So I thought I would talk about regular people's perception of war. And one way that I can explore that is by reading books and reading about what people have gone through. And I know that I have mentioned Resistance Women by Jennifer Chia Verini before, um, but I've just actually finished that book. It took me quite a while to get through it because it is, it is a difficult book to read. So I had to keep stopping and coming back to it. So Chia Verini took aspects of true stories of real people who were part of the resistance in Nazi Germany in the 30s and 40s, and she wrote a novel. So it's not an actual account of what happened, but it is really interesting because I might not have ever heard of these women who were working in the resistance trying to bring down the Nazi party. Mildred Harnack was an American citizen who married a German and moved to Germany. Greta Kukoff was a German resident, and Martha Dodd was an American who was in Germany during the early part before war was declared. She was the daughter of the American ambassador, so she had a really interesting view of what was happening. And they were working to try to resist what was happening with the National Socialist Party or the Nazi Party. Here's a question I've asked myself multiple times. What would you have done? Would you have taken part in resistance activities or would you have just put your head down and just tried to go along and live your life? What are you doing right now? Because the resistance is happening right now. Right now, I'm crying and living in anxiety. So you would probably be doing the same thing. <laughs> um, it's hard to look at what is happening to our neighbors. Now, we should mention that we are recording this on actual November 3rd, so we do not know what has happened in the United States yet, but I assume terrible things. I have a lot of anxiety about that today. Mm. So I'm going to move on and talk about a different book. <laughs> Keeping in with World War II, Mouse by Art Spiegelman. Yes. Mouse is a graphic novel, and it's based on uh, Art Spiegelman interviewed his father about his experiences as a Polish Jew and being a Holocaust survivor. And in this book, Jewish people are mice, Germans are cats, Polish people are pigs, so I think that he used that animal metaphor to be able to try and explain the human condition without having to actually have people in it. Yeah. Also, it makes it very clear who is who immediately because you can't tell when you look at people until they start speaking. This book has been classified as a memoir, a biography, history, fiction, autobiography. It's all of those things. And... It is the first and still the only graphic novel to have won a Pulitzer Prize. It is an amazing book. If you have not read this book, I highly recommend it. But it is, it's a hard read, even though it's a graphic novel. So, you know, it's in a comic book form. It's not a comic material. And speaking of graphic novels, I have one more graphic novel that I want to talk about. This one is called Child Soldier, When Boys and Girls Are Used in War, and it's by Michelle Chikawanin and Jessica Humphreys. This is much, much more recent. This book starts in 1993. Michelle was a child soldier in the Congo. He was kidnapped at the age of five to become a soldier. He did escape but his childhood was destroyed. He saw terrible, terrible things. And then 
later, the war in the Congo forced his family to move to a refugee camp. Some of them were eventually able to immigrate to Canada, but not all of them. His father died in the refugee camp. One of his sisters disappeared. They have no idea what happened to her. So this is a much more recent exploration of the impact of war, and especially the impact of war on children. This book is a teen graphic novel, and I think it would be a good way to introduce this topic to children. Now, I wouldn't give this to a young child, but older children, junior high children, would be able to read this and see themselves in Michelle's struggle and think about what they would have done in that position. It's a short book, but it's very moving. So I have some kids' books. I'm actually maybe going to have to do a little bit of buying. The CBC article that I had found had a couple. It had Bob Dylan's Blowing in the Wind. Apparently that's a picture book now. Oh. So I may have to purchase that. That is interesting. Yeah. So, of course, A Poppy is to Remember by Heather Patterson and Ron Lightburn, which is about the poppy and why we wear it and why it is the symbol of remembrance. In Flanders Field by Linda Granville and Janet Wilson. And, of course, this is John McRae's uh, famous poem that we yeah. recite on Remembrance Day. And Where Poppies Grow, again by Linda Granfield, is a scrapbook of photos, memorabilia, and anecdotes to bring us face-to-face with the people from all walks of life who risked everything for their country. And those are for sort of ages 6 to 8, 9 to 12, so there's some slightly younger books. Yeah, and I think it's really important that uh, children are exposed to the information about Remembrance Day and why we use this day to honor our veterans and our active military personnel. I know that in the past I've been told, you know, oh, the diary of Anne Frank is too sad for children to read. Well, yes, it is. It's very sad, but it happened to a young girl, and I really think that that tells them what kind of life that would be, which is not great. You know, it's important that they learn these things. And it's important that we remind ourselves, too. (sighs) Now I'm all sad. I know. I know it's important, but it is a bleak topic. How about an update on what I have read thus far? Give it to us. So I have finished... 78 books and completed 42 of the 50 Pop Sugar Reading Challenge categories. 48 of 52, is that what you said? 42. 42. 42 of 50. Okay. You're getting pretty close. The ones that are left are hard, so I don't know if I'll finish it. And 78 books, eh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to hit 100. It seems very unlikely. I know. I don't think I'm going to make my second goal this year. What was your second goal? It was 80. I'm only in the 50s, so I don't think I'm going to make 80 books this year. Yeah, it's a hard reading year. Most of my reading was done when I was on vacation. I spent a lot of time on the beach reading books. Right now, I am reading The Mall by Megan McCafferty. Chantelle and I will be talking about this book on a Facebook Live towards the end of the month. I don't know if we've set a date for that. No, I don't think we have. Yeah. I'm very interested to see what our different takes on this book are going to be because I'm positive that you and I will not have the same (laughs) reaction to this book. Although we both loved her first series. Her teen series, Sloppy Firsts. That's not the series name, but that's the title of the first book. That's the title of the first book. I can't remember what the series name was. I feel like it's whatever the character's name is, and I don't remember the character's name off the top of my head. It's been a long time since I read that series what are you reading besides the mall i am reading the mall i'm not i'm not really reading a whole lot right now i did start the mall i listened to like two minutes of it on audible and i'm not annoyed with it so far so i'm going (laughs) forward that is a strong recommendation yeah oh i'm sad that you're not reading i know the books that I want to read, unfortunately, haven't had audio versions. And you want to listen to them so you can knit. Exactly. 
So if you're unable to come into the library for any reason, we offer borrow by mail to all citizens of Cumberland County. This is an absolutely free service. We will mail you books, movies, jigsaw puzzles, really anything that we can fit into a mailing bag. Especially with the winter weather coming, you can opt to use borrow by mail for a few months and you can still come into the library if you know you have the ability to come in at some point and use borrow by mail it's still open to you so it's a good thing to keep in mind and if you're not able to come into the library because you have a weakened immune system and you're concerned with being out in public we're happy to mail things to you and we just include a mailing label so that you can mail them back to us you can also borrow ebooks audiobooks magazines tv shows movies and music online from the library for free all you need is a library card which we also provide for free if you need any help with any of that contact us you can email yes i'm pointing at chantal <laughs> she is not saying the email address In you can email information at cumberlandpubliclibraries.ca and we will give you a hand and if there's any particular topic you would like us to talk about on the radio, drop a comment in the My Two Favorite Librarians Facebook group. Right now I'm uh, working on our list for 2021. May it be a better year than this one. So if there's a topic that you think it would be interesting for us to talk about, drop it in our Facebook group and uh, maybe we'll add it to the list. <laughs> what are we talking about next week? Next week, we're talking about books with animal characters. Yes. Bye. Bye. My Two Favorite Librarians, brought to you by the Copper Tree Boutique in Dalesgrad Market, located in beautiful, historic downtown Amherst. <laughs>